toothpaste, that quick-acting, grand-tasting dentifrice with the fresh minty tang, presents The Billy Burke Show. And here she is, our smiling, bright morning star, our misleading lady, Miss Billy Burke. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Now let's look in at the little white house on Sunnyview Drive. It's a bright summer morning, and in the kitchen, Miss Burke and Daisy are having breakfast. Brother Julius left last night on a business trip, so Miss Burke and Daisy have the house all to themselves. Surely this is going to be a quiet and uneventful weekend. Or is it? Let's peek into the kitchen. Oh, and just think, Daisy, we don't have to do anything if we don't want to. While Julius is away, we can have a real vacation. Oh, I feel just like a cat out of the bag. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be mighty quiet around here without Mr. Julius. Yes, but won't it be nice? For a change, I mean. Nothing happening. It would be such a relief from that constant palladium. Goodness, how long has it been since we enjoyed a leisurely breakfast like this? Hmm? Oh, not since Mr. Julius was in bed with the measles. No, <laughs> that's right, Daisy. <laughs> More milk, Miss Billy? Yes, please, Daisy. Oh, dear. Someone at the door. Come in. Who is it? Colonel Fitz, Billy. Oh, Colonel Fitz. Well, come in, Fitzy. We are in the kitchen. Good morning, Billy. Good morning, Daisy. Good morning, Colonel. Mm. Won't you have a bite of breakfast, Colonel? <laughs> How could I refuse a lady as lovely as you, Billy? Oh, waffle batter. <laughs> You're just hungry. Oh, incidentally, we are having waffles. Would you like one? Of course you would. Daisy, will you bring a Colonel Fitz a nice, crispy one with syrup? Two just coming off the family line. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They smell delicious. Oh, and they are so tender, you can cut them with a knife. Oh. <laughs> Light is a sunbeam. Oh, my, Fitzy, you use the nicest words. I wish I had your vocabulary. Julia says I don't know an adjective from a preposterous. <laughs> well, I do, really. Mm, delicious waffles. Mm, they melt my mouth. Light as a sunbeam. Oh, I have a perfect idea. Daisy and I could go into business. We could call ourselves the Sunbeam Waffle Bakers. All we need is a little shop. And, and what about the OPA? Well, we could open a shop there, too. <laughs> All, we All we need is some... Uh, uh, excuse me, Billy. I, I very nearly forgot. I came over to ask you a favor. A favor? Yes, yes. I have a thousand dollars here in cash. Oh, my. <laughs> uh, will you keep it for me until tomorrow morning? Keep it for a thousand dollars in money? Cash in the barrel house? Yes, yes. Right oh. here, a thousand dollar bill, see? Oh, goodness. Now, I'm going out of town overnight, and I must be back here in the morning to complete a business deal. Uh -huh. I'd rather not carry a thousand dollars with me. I don't want to leave it in the house while I'm gone, either. Uh, would you mind if I left it here with you? Huh? thousand dollars? All in that little piece of paper? Oh, goodness. But I, I well, certainly you, you may leave it here if, I mean, do you want to trust us with it? I'd trust you with anything, Billy. You know that. Oh, really? Well, that's awfully sweet of you, but dear me, that's an awful lot of money, isn't it? You aren't afraid to have it in the house, are you, Billy? Afraid? Oh, heavens no, that little piece of paper can't hurt anyone. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'll feel a lot better knowing it's in safe hands. Oh, yes, naturally. And thank you for the waffle. Oh. I have to hurry downtown now. I'll see you first thing in the morning, Billy. Goodbye. Go goodbye. Goodbye. Um, Miss Billy, is that a real thousand-dollar bill? Oh, yes. Colonel Fitz left it here for us to take care of until tomorrow morning. Oh, look, isn't it pretty? Here, Daisy, hold it. Not me. I don't want to touch it. <laughs> well, gracious, it won't bite. I know, but that's too much money for one hunk of paper. What are we going to do with it? <laughs> well, just keep it for Colonel Fitz. We're just storing it for him like a charge account at the bank, you know. All day today and all night tonight? Mm-hmm. Miss Billy, I don't like being on the same roof with that much money. <laughs> but I don't understand, Daisy. No one knows we have it except us. That's what I mean. You and I are the only ones except Colonel Fitz who knows it's here. 
So if anything happens, we're going to be in trouble. Yes, I hadn't thought of it that way. Daisy, I know what we're going to do. I have the solution right in a nut shop. We'll take this $1,000 bill and hide it. We'll hide it so nobody can find it. That's a good idea, but who's going to hide it? Well, you hide it, then I won't know where it is. Yeah, but I'll know, and I don't want to. <laughs> you hide it. Me hide but, but if I hide it, then I'll know where it is. Goodness, I'm in such a state now, I don't trust anybody. <laughs> Not even me. Well, one of us has got to know where it is if we're going to hide it. Oh, dear, how can we... Wait, I know. Oh, gracious, it's so simple, Daisy. Well, what you gonna do? Why, the perfectly natural thing. I'll go out and get a perfect stranger to come in and hide it. And then neither of us will know where it is and won't have to worry about it. How was that again? Well, it's all solved, Daisy. You stay right here and guard the money. I'm going out and get a stranger. I'm going to get the strangest stranger I can find. <laughs> Ear pigeon. Ear pigeon pigeon. You know, Albert, this is why I dislike sitting in the park. You spent our last five cents for those peanuts. Now you feed them to the pigeons, and we haven't eaten since yesterday. It was my five cents. I earned it. Who picked up the man's hat for him? I did. Huh. Clarence, you spend your income, and I'll spend mine. I'd have an income if it weren't for you. The lady who was sitting here on the bench laid her purse right beside me. I'm certain it contained at least ten dollars. Yes. You would have been caught taking it, and the police would have thrown us in jail again. The trouble with you, Clarence, is you have no business sense. Oh. I swear you've forgotten everything that we learned at Harvard. I'm sorry, old man. Lend me your hairpin, will you? I think I see a good cigar. Oh. <laughs> uh, I'll be so glad when you can afford a hairpin of your own. You're always borrowing mine. Oh, really? You've forgotten who found that piece of inner tube yesterday to put over the holes in our shoes. Who cut it in half and gave you the biggest piece? <laughs> yes. Yes, that was really decent of you, Clarence. I, I had forgotten. What do you say we stroll down to the bakery and smell the cinnamon rolls? <laughs> well, you, uh, you have your dates mixed, Albert. This is the afternoon we sit in the ventilator at the Bijou Theater. They're showing an excellent picture. Well, let's get along, then. Oh, gentlemen, uh, gentlemen, wait, please. Uh, hold on, Clarence. We're being paged. Hmm, well, lady. She looks rather prosperous. Excuse me for buttering in. My name is Billy Burke. Would, would you gentlemen do me a favor? Well, that all depends, madam. Uh, we were on our way to the theater. Oh, well, I'll, I'll pay you. Uh, I'll, 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 Im I'll immerse you for your time. I'll, I'll give you each a dollar. A dollar? Mm hmm. Mm. What do you like this to steal? I mean, what do you wish us to do? Oh, well, <laughs> it's nothing at all. It will only take you a moment. I have a thousand-dollar bill at my house, and I'd like you to hide it for me. Hide a thousand-dollar bill? Yes. Uh, you know, like the game we used to play when we were children, hide and bo peep. Madam, are you intoxicated? Intoxicated? No, I'm an American. You, <laughs> you see, neither Daisy or I want to know where the money is hidden, so we have to have someone outside the family hide it. Do I make myself clear? Mm, uh, excuse us for a moment. Come here, Clarence. A thousand dollars. She wants us to hide it. Do you think she's all there? I doubt it, but a dollar's a dollar. Albert, a thousand dollars. Shall we try it? It looks like a gilt-edged investment. What can we lose? Uh, Miss Berg. Yes? Um, we have decided to accept the offer. Oh. I'm Albert, and this is Clarence. Oh. <laughs> you may consider us at your service. Oh, thank you. You're both very kind. Just come with me. Uh, there's one thing. You aren't going to ask us for references. References? Oh, heavens no. I can see that you're both honest men. If I say my, so myself, I'm a good judge of caricatures. <laughs> Burke is taking no chances with the thousand-dollar bill which Colonel Pitts left in her care. To be sure that neither Daisy nor she will know where it is, Miss Burke has invited two strangers whom she found in the park to come to her house and hide the money. Daisy's out in the backyard hanging up clothes, and Miss Burke is in the front room with the strangers. Albert, 
and Clarence. Now, here is a thousand-dollar bill. All you gentlemen have to do is to hide it somewhere in the house. Isn't that easy? A thousand dollars. Pretty, isn't it? Let me hold it, Albert. Hmm. Is that a phony? Oh, a phony? No, no. No, the, the picture is on it is of George Washington or Lincoln or somebody. I, I don't just know who. Now, you boys hurry and find a nice place to hide it. And here is a dollar for each of you. One for you, Albert, and one for you, Clarence. Isn't this an easy way to make money? Yes, it certainly <laughs> is. It certainly <laughs> is. Uh, Clarence, I'll hold the thousand dollars. Now, Miss Burke, where do you suggest that we hide it? Oh, well, that's entirely up to you. I don't want to know where you put it. That's why I brought you here. Don't be stupid, Albert. You heard what Miss Burke said. She wants us to hide it. Well, yes, but... Albert, the lady knows what she's doing. <laughs> why should she want to know where we put the thousand dollars? She has worries enough. Mm, that's right. Mr. Clarence hit the hit the button right on the nail. You see, Daisy and I don't want to be responsible for all that money by knowing where it is. So I'll go out in the backyard where I can't peek, and you boys find a nice hiding place where the money will be absolutely safe. But but what what No, is... no, no, no. I've paid you your dollars. You'll have to put it away all by yourselves. Hurry now. Hide, hide, hide. I'm going out with Daisy. Why, well, she really went. Albert, we're wealthy men. Let's go. Oh, where? Where? Out, old man. Out to the Ritz Waldorf. By six o'clock this evening, I intend to be having breakfast in bed. <sighs> we could live well, Clarence. Like kings, Albert. Come along. No. No, we can't do it. Can't do it. She trusted us. Albert, where is your business? It's a thousand dollars. Gad, man. We can go to the Bijou Theater and sit in the loge. Hmm. No, no, I wouldn't feel right about it. You mean you intend to hide that money and leave it here? Oh, I'm torn with temptation. But it's so easy, Albert. She'll never know we took it. We simply hid it well, that's all. I don't think we should do it. I say we should. We're partners, aren't we? I don't like it. Well, I do. It's a chance of a lifetime. She'll never know the difference. But this is not the kind of a deal we can work that way. Clarence, after all, it's... I brought them home with me, and they're in the house now, hiding the money... You see, Daisy, there's always a way to do everything if one just thinks about it long enough. I don't know. Somehow this idea don't sound right. Two strange men prowled around the house with all that cabbage. What cabbage? The money. Colonel Fitz's money. And what I see of them men through the window, they don't look too good. Oh, Daisy, they're fine men, both of them. Simply because their toes were sticking out of their shoes and they had patches on their trousers, there's no reason to distrust them. They're probably artists or musicians. Really, they're diamonds in the rough neck. Well, maybe so. But I still got a feeling there's something wrong with this idea. I don't know what it is, but it's something. Oh, you're just imagining things, Daisy. You you got out of bed this morning on the wrong side of the road. I wonder if... Do you suppose Albert and Clarence have finished hiding? Albert? Clarence? Oh, Ollie, Ollie, Ollie Olsen, free! <laughs> don't hear nothing. Well, they're probably... No, they've hidden the money. That's it. Let's go in and see. Oh, boy! Boy! Nobody in the house. Bless their heart. They've done it just they did just what I asked them to do. They've hidden the thousand dollars and gone on their way, just like the knight who folded his Arab and disappeared into the tent. <gasps> My, I feel so much better. No more worrying about that. Oh, that horrid old thousand dollars. Yeah, and... the only worry is now is... Where is it? That's the lovely part of it, Daisy. We don't know. Now, if burglars come tonight and say, Where is that money? We can say, We don't know. And we'll be telling the truth. I'm very proud of me. <laughs> Let's see. If the burglars say, Where that money? We say, We don't know. And when Colonel Fitz comes back and says, Where that money? We say, Oh, good heavens. Oh, what do we say? I knew there was something going to go wrong, and this is it. Now, now, wait, Daisy. I had this all planned out. Let me think. What? And we'll be telling the truth. I'm very proud of me. <laughs> Let's see. If the burglars say, where that money? We say, we don't know. And when Colonel Fitz comes back and says, where that money? We say, oh, good heavens. Oh, what do we say? I knew there was something going to go wrong, and this is it. Now, now, wait, Daisy. I had this all planned out. Let me think. What were we going to do when Colonel Fitz came back? 
Miss Billy, don't use that collective plural pronoun we. I don't want no stalk in this company. Great. <laughs> Daisy, when I planned all this, do you suppose I overlooked something? I would say there's just a possible certainty. Well, we're, we're not going to be frightened. We've got to look at this problem in the cold light of doom. Yes, sir. The money is <laughs> hidden somewhere in the house, so when Colonel Fitz comes back, we'll simply hunt for it and find it. <laughs> there, wasn't that easy? Was it? Certainly, after all, there are only so many rooms in the house and only so many places to hide anything. So many is right. Do you remember the time you hid Mr. Judas' box of cigars when he was going to stop smoking? Mm-hmm. Well, where did I hide that box? That's just what I mean. There was a box and you hid it yourself, and we ain't found it yet. Well... Now, how are we going to find a little hunk of paper that somebody else hid? Oh, Daisy, sometimes you can be very depressing. Yes, and I know. But we're not, go <laughs> we're not going to be upset. The money is somewhere in the house. And if we begin to look for it right now, we'll surely find it before Colonel Fitz comes back. After all, he won't be here until tomorrow morning. Gracious, we have all evening, all night. Why, in that time, we could find a needle in a hot foot. <laughs> well, when did you hide Mr. Junius's cigar box? When did I hide it? Last May. But that's different. Money is always easier to find than anything else. Oh, Goodness, let's not just stand here. Let's be up and doing. Let's look. Where do you suppose they put it? I don't know. Well, suppose your name was Clarence and Albert. Where would you put a thousand dollar bill? In my pocket. Oh, <laughs> Daisy, you're no help at all. Goodness, help me try to think. Concentrate. Well, I don't know where to start, Miss Billy. Why don't you concentrate? Use that mental telepathy stuff. Oh, well, that's an idea. I'll close my eyes and make my mind a blank, a total blank. Then the first thing that comes into my head will be the place where they hid the money. <laughs> now I'm going to concentrate. Hush, Daisy. See anything? No, no, it doesn't work. All I can see is a shrimp salad. Well, <laughs> we'll simply have to start looking. Do you suppose they put it under the rug? Ain't nothing there. No, just a just a couple of rocket pins. Look behind the pillow on the sofa. Anything there? Two pennies and a gum wrapper. We ain't <laughs> never gonna find that bill. Daisy, you mustn't you mustn't accentuate the negative. We have to find it. There are no ifs or andrews about it. I wonder if they did hide it in the clothes hall cloth closet. You suppose they could have put it there? See anything? Oh, goodness, no, no. Oh, here's this box of old hats of mine that was supposed to go out for the rag man today. Will you take it out, please, Daisy? Oh, good heavens, who's that? Peek through the window, Daisy. Uh-oh, excuse me, Miss Billy. I'm getting this box of hats out and back to the rag man. Yes, but who's at the door? Colonel Fitz, goodbye, good Colonel Sally Ho. Oh, Daisy, <laughs> Daisy. Oh, dear, she always goes away someplace. Oh, dear. Oh, oh, hello, Fitzy. How nice to see you. Hello, my pretty girl. Oh. My plans changed at the last minute. Oh. Luckily, I don't have to leave town tonight. You don't? No. I received a wire from the chap on this business deal. Yes. He's coming through here this evening, so we'll settle the matter right here. Mm. Aren't you glad I'm not going? What? Oh, 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 yes, I'm glad you're not, of course. <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm, I'm devastated. <laughs> you look worried, Billy girl. Well, you see... I'm glad it turned out this way. I've been thinking about that thousand dollars you and Daisy loan here in the house. Oh, yeah. Too much money. Dangerous. Yeah. Should have thought about that in the beginning. Mm. Well, aren't you going to invite me in? Invite you in? Oh, yes, I suppose so. That is, yes, do, do come in, come in. Thank you. I shouldn't have taken advantage of your kindness, Billy, asking you to keep that money. I'll take it now. You won't have to worry about it. Oh, do you do you think you should carry it with you after all? There are so many hold-uppers, you know. Oh, I'll take it right home, just across the street. Well... Don't give it a thought. I wouldn't let anything happen to that thousand dollars. No. That's why I left it here with you. I knew it would be safe. Yes. <laughs> you see, I trust you, Billy. Yes. I trust you with anything I have. Uh -huh. <laughs> How does that make you feel? You you have no idea. <laughs> well, I won't keep you, Billy. Just give me the money and I'll go along. Yes, well, you see, uh, I am... 
Nothing's happened. Happened? Well, well, yes and no. Yes and no. Oh, oh, oh the thousand dollars is all right. Oh. It, it's perfectly safe. <laughs> oh, give me a bad turn there for a moment. Oh, did I? Yes, yes the money is safe. It, it's in the house. <laughs> Somewhere. 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 Where? Well, well, I'm not quite sure yet. Billy, you haven't lost my thousand dollars. Oh, no, 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 it's here. We just have to find it. It'll be sort of fun, like looking for Easter eggs. No. <laughs> then you have lost it. But no. where? How did you do it? I didn't do it. You see, well, Daisy and I didn't trust ourselves. We, we didn't want to know where it was. So I went out and got Clarence and Albert, and they hid it for me. Clarence and Albert, who are they? They're men. Obviously. Well. <laughs> but who are they? Where are they? I don't know. We didn't get very well acquainted. I found them in the park, and they hid the money and went away. Do you mean, Billy Burke, that you brought two, two bums from the park and gave them my money? Oh, they weren't bums. They were very nice and so eager to help me. Oh, a thousand dollars. Where are they? I don't know. We didn't get very well acquainted. I found them in the park, and they hid the money and went away. Do you mean, Billy Burke, that you brought two... two bums from the park and gave them my money? Oh, they weren't bums. They were very nice and so eager to help me. Oh, a thousand dollars gone. But it isn't gone. They, they hid it here in the house. They told me they would. And you believed them. You threw my thousand dollars right out the window. Well, how can you say that? I wouldn't throw anything out of the window. Heavens, you, you don't think Clarence and Albert stole it? Think, I know. But if they were going to steal it, they would have told me. They, they, they didn't, Fitzy. I'm sure they didn't. I'll bet you a hundred dollars they did. No. A hundred dollars. Well, they, they'd feel badly if they heard you say that, Fitzy. Really, they would. They're sweet boys, both of them. I'll just bet you a hundred dollars they didn't steal it. All we have to do is look through the house. We'll, we'll find it. I know we will. Well, uh, then let's start looking. Yes. Where shall we begin? Well, we'll start at the attic and go right down to the cellar. <laughs> we'll search every nook and rooney. <laughs> Step back in the shadows, old man. Now, you admit we made a mistake leaving that money, and you've agreed we'll enter the house and retrieve it. Stealthily, of course. Mm -hmm. You're a reckless businessman, Albert. Ah. I'm not entirely certain that stealing the money is a good financial risk. Come, come, Albert. We must plunge. No. No, I have a better plan, and based on sound business practice. If they haven't found the thousand-dollar bill, I see a way in which we may turn a neat profit honestly. But not a thousand dollars. Clarence, money isn't everything. Live and let live. Besides, I still have 35 cents for my original. Why brag? Remember, Albert, you can't take it with you. What's your plan? Come with me. We'll announce ourselves at the door. <coughs> oh, oh, how do you do? Oh, it's Albert. Oh, Colonel Fitz, look, they've returned Clarence and Albert. <gasps> See, uh, are you the two ragamuffins who stole my money? I beg your pardon. I resent the inference, sir. Yes, you see, Fitzy, they are gentlemen, both of them. Answer one question. Did you or did you not hide a thousand dollar bill in this house? The answer, sir, is we did. Have you found it? No. <laughs> you see, I told you, I told you. Oh, you lose your bet, Fitzy. Clarence and Albert are men of high calico. But, Albert, where, where did you hide it? Oh, I... Uh... I regret, Miss Burke, that I must ask a price for that information. It's business, you know. Business? Oh, oh yes, a uh, hundred dollars? I refuse. I refuse. Uh, that my, offer. my, my, my business partner is a little hot-headed. Uh, we accept the offer, Miss Burke. Oh. We placed the thousand-dollar bill in the lining of a lady's hat, a red one, oh. in a box of hats in the hall closet. Oh. I wouldn't have believed. Oh, they're honest men, as honest as the day is done. Pay the boy my hundred dollars, Fitzy, please. Uh, well, why, it's robbery. Hundred dollars. 
beer. Oh, thank you. And thank you, Miss Burke. It's been a pleasure meeting oh, you. Oh, thank you. Now, if you'll excuse us, we must run along. We're, we're late for the theater. Oh. Cheerio. Oh, cheerio, Albert and Clarence. Cheerio. Boom. Bum. Now, 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 Fitzy. It all turned out just as I told you it would. Where's the closet? Let's find that hat. The hat. Oh, the hat. Oh, Daisy. Yes, sir. D- Daisy, did you, did, you, did you take the box out? Yes, sir. Did, did the rag man pick it up? Yes, sir. Billy, don't tell me that box of hats is gone. Oh, gracious, isn't that the silliest thing to have happened? Silly. My thousand dollars is gone oh, with it. Don't flusty yourself, Fitzy. I'll get the money back. I'll find it. I promise you I will. But the hats have gone to the rag man. It doesn't make any difference. We'll find You'll it. You'll never find it in this town. One hat's just like another. A hat's oh, a hat. Oh, 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 not my hats, Fitzy. Oh, <laughs> I'll find the one with the money in it, and we'll recognize it immediately. Why, when I wore it, they said it looked like the atomic bomb over Bikini. Goodbye, Mr. Miller. Goodbye, everybody. Till next Saturday. And remember to always look for the silver lining and try to find the sunny side of life. Billy Berg Show is directed by Dave Titus. Today's story was written by Paul West. A part of Daisy is played by Lillian Randolph. Today, Albert and Clarence were George Neese and Ken Christie. Music is under the direction of Carl Bonowitz. Tune in again next Saturday when the makers of Listerine Toothpaste again present The Billy Burke Show. For the best in Saturday listening, don't miss Let's Pretend, The Billy Burke Show, and Armstrong's Theater of Today. This is Colonel Fitz speaking. Or if you prefer, your announcer, Marvin Miller. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>